here we are back again, and this will be the last two chapters in Via and how we look at Via and the things that she feels and what she's going through during this time that we weren't aware of. So we're going to finish up how Via's feeling about Augie and, and move on. So today we'll start on page 111 with Trick or Treat, which is Augie's favorite time of year. August said he wasn't feeling well enough to go trick-or-treating later in the afternoon, which was sad for him because I know how much he loved trick-or-treating, especially after it got dark outside. Even though I was well beyond the trick-or-treating stage myself, I usually threw on some mask or other to accompany him up and down the blocks, watching him knocking on people's door, giddy with excitement. I knew it was the one night a year when he could truly be like every other kid, no one knew he was different under the mask. To August, that must have felt absolutely amazing. At seven o'clock that night, I knocked on his door. Hey, I said. Hey, he said back. He wasn't using his PlayStation or reading a comic book. He was just lying on the bed looking at the ceiling. Daisy, as always, was next to him on the bed, her head draped over his legs. The bleeding screen costume was crumpled up on the floor next to the Boba Fett one. How's your stomach? I said, sitting next to him on the bed. I'm still nauseous. You sure you're not up for the Halloween parade? Positive. This surprised me. Usually August was such a trooper about his medical issues. Whether it was skateboarding a few days after a surgery or sipping food through a straw when his mouth was practically bolted shut. This was a kid who's gotten more shots, taken more medications, put up with more procedures by the age of 10 than most people would have to put up with in 10 lifetimes. And he was sidelined with a little nausea? Doesn't sound like Augie. He's a fighter, especially on his favorite time of year. You want to tell me what's up? I said, sounding a bit like mom. No. Is it school? Yes. Teachers, schoolwork, friends, which is it? He didn't answer. Did someone say something, I asked. People always say something, he answered bitterly, and I could tell he was close to crying at this point. Tell me what happened, I said. And then he did just that. He told me what happened. He had overheard some very mean things some boys were saying about him. He didn't care about what the other boys had said. He expected that, but he was hurt that one of the boys was his best friend, Jack Will. Man, when best friends go behind your back, when best friends cut you down and go and do things that hurt your feelings, it's the worst. It really hurts more than any other thing. I remembered his mentioning Jack a couple of times over the past few months. I remembered mom and dad saying he seemed like a really nice kid, saying they were glad August had already made a friend like that. Sometimes kids are stupid, I said softly, holding his hand. I'm sure he didn't mean it. Then why would he say it? He's been pretending to be my friend all along. Tushman probably bribed him with good grades or something. I bet you he was like, hey, Jack, if you make friends with a freak, you don't have to take any tests this year. Now, you know that's not true, August, and don't call yourself a freak. Whatever, I wish I'd never gone to that stupid school in the first place. But I thought you were liking it. I hate it. He was angry all of a sudden and punching his pillows. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. He was shrieking at the top of his lungs. I didn't say anything. I didn't know what to say. He was hurt. He was mad. Sometimes we we don't know what to say. And sometimes even when we're hurt and mad, we don't know what to say. And sometimes we say things to hurt the other people just because we're so hurt. Because we can't believe how they would hurt us. Now, I let him have a few more minutes of his fury. And Daisy started licking the tears off of his face. Come on, Augie, I said, patting his back gently. Why don't you put on your Django Fett costume and... It's Boba Fett. Why does everyone mix that up? Okay, put on your Boba Fett costume, I said, trying to stay calm. I put my arm around his shoulder. Let's go to the parade, okay? 
If I go to the parade, mom will think I'm feeling better and then she'll make me go to school tomorrow. Mom would never make you go to school, Augie, I answered. Come on, let's just go. It'll be fun, I promise. And I'll let you have all my candy. Now, that ain't enough to make a kid happy. I don't know what'll do it. He didn't argue. He got out of bed and slowly started pulling on his Boba Fett costume. I helped him adjust the straps and tighten the belt. And by the time he put his helmet on, I could tell he was feeling better. Oh, just like Via. Now, she might be a little upset or jealous that he gets all the attention, but gosh, who wouldn't be? But here she is, giving him that same attention herself and making him feel better. Time to think, the last chapter in the Via section. August played up the stomach ache the next two days so he wouldn't have to go to school. Now, I admit I felt a little bad for Mom, who was genuinely concerned that he had a stomach bug, but I had promised August I wouldn't tell her about the incident at school. By Sunday, he was still determined not to go back to school. Well, what are you planning on telling Mom and Dad? I asked him when he told me this. Well, they said I could quit whenever I wanted to. He said this while he was still focused on a comic book he was reading. But you've never been the kind of kid who quits things, I said truthfully. That's not like you at all, August. I'm quitting. You're going to have to tell Mom and Dad why, I pointed out, pulling the comic book out of his hands so that he'd have to look up at me while we were talking. Then Mom will call the school and everyone will know about it. Will Jack get in trouble? Well, I would think so. Well, good then. Well, I have to admit, August was surprising me more and more. He pulled another comic book off his shelf and started leafing through it. Now, it sounded like he was wanting Jack to get in trouble. Why do you think he would want Jack to get in trouble? Because he's hurt? Because he wants Jack to feel the way he feels? That's not fair. We can't expect to hurt other people just because we're hurting from their same actions. We gotta be better than that, as hard as it is. Now, Augie, I said, are you really gonna let a couple of stupid kids keep you from going back to school? I know you've been enjoying it. Don't give them that power over you. Don't give them that satisfaction. They have no idea. I even heard them, he explained. No, I know, but... Via, it's okay. I know what I'm doing. I've made up my mind. He's 10. Does he really know what he's doing? But this is crazy, Augie, I said emphatically, pulling the new comic book away from him too. You have to go back to school. Everyone hates school sometimes. I hate school sometimes. I hate my friends sometimes. That's just life, Augie. You want to be treated normally, right? Well, this is normal. We all have to go to school sometimes despite the fact that we have bad days, okay? Well, do people go out of their way to avoid touching you, Via? He answered, which left me momentarily without an answer. Yeah, right. That's what I thought. So don't compare your bad days at school to mine, okay? Okay, that's fair, I said. But it's not a contest about whose day sucked the most, Augie. The point is we all have to put up with the bad days. Now, unless you want to be treated like a baby the rest of your life or like a kid with special needs, you got to suck it up and go. He didn't say anything, but I think that last little bit was getting to him. You don't have to say a word to those kids, I continued. August, actually, it's so cool that you know what they said, but they don't know you know what they said, you know. No, I'm all confused at all those you knows. What the heck? You know what I mean. You don't have to talk to them ever again if you don't want to, and they'll never know why, see? Or you can pretend to be friends with them, but deep down inside, you know you're really not. Is that how you are with Miranda, he asked? Ooh, Augie's bringing it back to Via. No, I answered quickly and defensively. I never faked my feelings with Miranda. So why are you saying I should? I'm not. I'm just saying you shouldn't let those little jerks get to you. That's all. Like Miranda got to you. Why don't you, or why do you keep bringing up Miranda? I yelled impatiently. I'm trying to talk to you about your friends. Please keep mine out of it. You're not even friends with her anymore. 
What does that have to do with anything we're talking about, Augie? Well, the way August was looking at me reminded me of a doll's face. He was just staring at me blankly with his half-closed doll eyes. She called the other day, he said finally. What? I said stunned. And you didn't tell me? She wasn't calling you, he answered, pulling both comic books out of my hands. She was calling me just to say hi, to see how I was doing. She didn't even know I was going to a real school now. I can't believe you hadn't told her. She said the two of you don't hang out as much anymore, but she wanted me to know she'd always loved me like a big sister. Double stunned, stung, flabbergasted. No words formed in my mouth. Why didn't you tell me? I said finally. I don't know, he shrugged, opening the first comic book up again. Well, I'm telling Mom and Dad about Jack Will if you stop going to school, I answered. Tushman will probably call you into the office and make Jack and those other kids apologize to you in front of everyone. And everyone will treat you like a kid who should be going to a school for kids with special needs. Is that what you want? Because that's what's going to happen. Otherwise, just go back to school and act like nothing happened. Or if you want to confront Jack about it, fine. But either way, if you... Fine, 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 he interrupted. What? Fine, I'll go. I'll go back to school, he yelled. Not loudly. Just stop talking about it already. Can I just please read my book now? Fine, I answered, turning to leave his room. I thought of something. Did Miranda say anything else about me? I asked. He looked up from his comic book and looked right into my eyes. She said to tell you she misses you, quote, unquote. I nodded. Thanks, I said casually, too embarrassed to let him see how happy that made me feel. Gosh, friends don't know how much they can hurt you or how much they can change you. So, guys, if you're going to be a friend, be a real friend to someone. Don't be one that hurts other people. And if you do by accident hurt someone else, make it right. Make it better. Say you're sorry and mean it. And then don't go behind their back and say other things and do other things. Be a true friend. One that's always there or has always been there. See you guys.